Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is Nadia Sands, and this, of course, is another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. Not wearing a backwards hat, my hair is just super long, I went with a beanie today. It's the last video of 2017. I figured we'd go out on a high note doing some motion graphics, After Effects stuff. I'm gonna show you guys a more in-depth look at the graph editor inside of After Effects, a tool that will guarantee make your animations and everything that you're doing in After Effects look 10 times smoother, I promise. Maybe you knew it was there, maybe you didn't know it was there. Today may change your life, I don't know. We're gonna find out. Well, all right, open up After Effects because we're getting started for the last time in 2017. Your lipstick is colored, don't bother and show. All right, guys, After Effects is open, and I've got a very simple shape layer down in my timeline. It's just a circle, nothing really that exciting here. But what we're going to be focusing on today is this tiny little icon. If you hover over it, it says Graph Editor. And if you click on it, it brings up this entirely new little panel in After Effects that you may or may not have seen before. But nothing is here right now because we need to add keyframes to the thing that we want to use the Graph Editor for. So let's toggle that out and come over here to our shape layer. I'm just going to set a position keyframe here and go over... 15 frames. You can tell over here how many frames. And I'm going to set another position keyframe. And then I'm simply just going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to move this out of frame. If you guys have used keyframes before or anything like that, you know that this doesn't look very good, right? You want it to be a little bit more dynamic. This just looks very plain and very stale. If you followed some of my other videos before, maybe you know this on your own, you can right click on this keyframe and set it to easy ease out and set this one to easy ease in, which will give it a little bit more dynamic movement where it looks a little bit smoother, but we're gonna take it a step farther and we're gonna use the graph editor. Now for the graph editor, any parameter that has multiple axes, meaning like X and Y, you'll have to split those dimensions so you can operate them independently inside of graph editor that may sound confusing but it's really super easy let's check it out so because I'm only animating this circle on the x-axis because it's moving horizontally I'm just gonna right click on position and go to separate dimensions and it will separate it into X and Y position it will set a keyframe for both even though the Y position is not being animated so I'm actually gonna turn the keyframes off for Y and what's nice about this is if I wanted to say oh I don't want it to go directly into the middle I actually want this to end a little bit higher or lower, I can move the vertical axis and still have it operate on the horizontal axis without having to set or mess up my keyframes, which is actually pretty nice. But for now, we're just dealing with horizontal. So what I'm gonna do is highlight these keyframes and click open the graph editor now, and you'll see I have this line. Now, what can we do with this line? Each of these points is a keyframe that you have. And since we only have two keyframes, we only have two points. Now check this out. I'm actually gonna leave this the way it is, and I'm gonna duplicate this layer and just turn this off for now. And I'm gonna come into my graph editor on my top layer and I'm gonna start adjusting these keyframes. Now what I like to do is I like for it to come in fast and end slow. And you can kind of see a visual representation of what that looks like here, where I want it to come in fast. So I'm gonna pull this up and then end slow. And I'm gonna pull this over to the side. And if you hold down shift on your keyboard, uh, it will lock it to a horizontal plane so you don't get any weirdness going on here. So I'm just gonna pull this all the way over. Now watch what happens. See how it comes in super fast and then ends really slow? That looks significantly more dynamic than just your standard keyframes. And if I turn this bottom layer on, you can see both of them animating at the same time. How the one that we did comes in fast and ends slow and it looks a little bit more dynamic. Now, conversely, if I open the graph editor again and I want it to come in slow and end fast, I can do it the opposite way, where I pull it over to the side and then pull this down, and now it will come in slow and end fast. Now what's super cool about this is you can manipulate the animation path of your object without adding additional keyframes, and you can do some really cool things. So we're gonna go back to our come in fast and end slow, but check this out. I'm actually going to take this keyframe and I'm going to pull it up past the horizontal point. And what that's gonna do is when it animates in, it'll actually overshoot the center point and then bounce back. So if you pull this up, it will actually overshoot where your ending point is, and you don't have to add an additional keyframe to do that, which to me is actually pretty cool. And then you can give it additional oomph by just turning on motion blur, and then that will really make it look spectacular. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these keyframes, and the same thing works for scale, for example. So I'm gonna set a scale keyframe here, and I'm gonna do the same thing. We'll go to 12 this time, and I'm gonna set the scale here to zero, and it's gonna scale up to 100. Now, with linear keyframes, look at how boring that looks. That's awful, why would anybody wanna do that? We're gonna take these, we're gonna right click on them, go to Easy Ease, open up our graph editor, and here we are again. So I'm gonna do the same thing, we're gonna have it come in fast and end slow. And now look at that. 
It's a lot more dynamic, it's a lot more poppy looking, and it just feels overall nicer. And we can do the same thing here where it overshoots the scale, and you can go way up like this, but I don't have to set multiple keyframes. This is still only two keyframes, but I'm manipulating the animation path using the graph editor. And I think that that's really, really cool. Now, if we come down here, we can take a look at some of the tools that we have available to us. This little eyeball down here is which properties are actually shown in the graph editor. This icon here will let you change the graph type. This button down here will actually show you a little box on your timeline. If you select multiple keyframes, it will show you a box between where and where the values lie. If you turn that off, that box goes away. I like having it on personally. This little magnet icon down here is snapping. You can adjust the zoom graph height here. And then with a keyframe selected, all of these over here are actually your keyframe options. So instead of having to right click on the keyframe and go to keyframe assistant and then change it here, you can actually just click on the keyframe that you want to change and all of your options are down here. And now for our circle over here, if we come back over and we just copy and paste the keyframes again, so I'm gonna copy the last one first and the first one last. And what we can do is we can reverse this animation here with the keyframe editor for doing multiple keyframes. It's actually really super easy. What we'll do is we'll pull this up to match as close as we can to this line here. And there you go. Give you guys a little pro tip here too. I don't know if you know about this. If you have an animated parameter that you have already done your animations for with the graph editor and you wanted to attach text or anything to this guy here, like this, and I want this little smiley face thing to animate with my circle. Uh, once I've done my animations for my circle, all I have to do is take this layer, my little smiley face layer, and take the pick whip and parent it to my shape layer and it will actually follow all of the animation parameters that we just did with everything else. Make sure to turn on motion blur, there you go. So that's pretty cool. If you wanna ever attach things to that, um, and you've gone through and you've done the animation and you've taken the time and everything, you don't have to redo that for other things that you want to do the same thing. As long as it's attached with the parent, you can kind of do whatever you want where like this can just be text off to the side and maybe you want it to just animate in like this where there's like some text on there, but it will do the same as long as it's parented. So a quick little pro tip for you. All right, guys, that's the graph editor in a nutshell. If you haven't used it before, maybe you've dabbled with it a little bit. Hopefully this video gave you a better idea and understanding of the capabilities of the graph editor and how powerful it actually is. No matter how simple or how complex your animations are in After Effects, using the graph editor can give you a more dynamic look and feel to all of your motion graphics overall, forever and ever. Graph editor. All right, kids, go off and make something cool in After Effects now. Last video of 2017. Hope you enjoyed yourself. As always, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also check out the last video that you missed. You can watch all the videos from 2017 if you want. What do I care? I'll take the views. You can take the knowledge. It's a nice mutual trade-off. Subscribe, check out the last video that you missed. Make sure you follow me on social at Naughty and Sands and I'll see you next year, kids.